Good afternoon, boys and girls. It's Mr. S. With your chapter nine on, let me see, can I remember? Oh yes, it's the memory chapter. This is your, your review for chapter nine on memory. So let's get to it right away, get to this as quick as I can. Basically, know the structure of memory, the idea of working memory or short-term memory, long-term memory, the encoding from short to long-term, and the process of retrieval. Know those factors on a structural basis and as what they individually mean. Remember, one of the key things is encoding. And we, some of that we do automatically, some of that we do um, takes effort. Look at the idea of Ebbinghaus and some of the ideas that he gave us and the nonsense syllables he used to show the forgetting curve. Look at some of the different things we looked at with encoding, things like the next in line effect as a form of encoding failure. Look at the idea of the spacing effect and how that can enhance or not enhance encoding properly. We talked about semantic encoding, visual encoding, auditory encoding. We looked at the idea of mnemonic devices like um, and chunking and those kind of things to help us encode. When we're looking at memory, we looked at different the idea of echoic and iconic memory. And that in the short-term process, those issues. So please look at that. Remember in our short-term memory, our memory, the uh, magic number seven plus or minus two, and what that represents. We looked at the idea of long-term potentiation, and how that's the ability to increase a neuron's uh, firing potential, so it'll fire more often. We looked at different types of memory also, memory also, things like implicit and explicit memory. And when we talked about Lashley and the rats and where memory is housed, what we did come up with is that the hippocampus does store explicit memories. More specifically, and I did not say this in class, but I'm telling you now, left side of the brain we use for language right side of the brain we use more for visual. So damage to the left side of the hippocampus affects verbal memory or verbal information and the right side with visual. Um, if we had to look for anything for implicit memories, there's been talk about the cerebellum housing implicit memories. And again, that's something I didn't talk about in class, but that is in the book and on the test. Um, we talked about different types of, how do I want to put it, using uh, memory, the idea of recall versus recognition. And I guess we could look at the idea of retrieval cues, things that spark us to pull things out of long-term memory into memory that we can use at the moment. We'll talk things like priming, um, retrieval cues, the idea of mood congruent memory, and how um, memories or emotional memories, things from different moods that we are in, can help us remember more things or not remember certain things. Um, then the idea of once we get things into long-term memory and that movement you know from being encoded properly the next thing is retrieval and what is it that you know we can talk about things like priming and mood congruent to help us get it out there are things that keep it from coming out things like retrieval failure we're going to talk things like different types of interference proactive versus retroactive interference um proactive helps you is when it's a harder time to learn new information because something from the past 
and retroactive is vice versa, where you can't remember something from the past because it's something new that you've learned. Uh, look at the idea of motivated forgetting. Um, look at Freud again. Freud always comes back to us, so please look at Freud and the idea of repression, repression of anxiety, arousing memories. Freud believed that if something um, made us feel very uncomfortable, we didn't like the, the experience, we might repress it and think of certain memories that we don't think of all the time. And that's one reason why we don't focus most of our life on the past that's negative, but we try to stay more in the present and future. And when we do look at the past, it's normally from a hopefully positive perspective. Um, let's see, last ideas I want to give you. Uh, look at the idea just of memory construction. The, also the idea that any memories before the age of three, especially from the adult perspective, are very unreliable. Um, look at the idea of the misinformation effect, that sometimes we can have memories planted in us, fabricated, given to us falsely, and we believe that they really occurred. And that should do it. There is free response. First of all, that should be about 40, 40 multiple choice. The free response has to deal with um, encoding and effortful processing and the effects of encoding in those areas. So you're going to have a friend again who's going to give you their belief regarding encoding and you're going to have to either say whether you agree or disagree and actually hopefully disagree because your friend is wrong but you need to tell me why your friend is wrong um, other than that that should be it uh, if there's any questions ask me in class talk to you later bye bye